Welcome to episode three in the Schlieve Lucre series. Thanks to um, the McAuliffe clan for giving us the use of the hall. Uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful place to play music, to record music. And I have to thank the Cork, Kerry, Limerick County Councils and they are supported by the Arts Council and Creative Ireland. In this one, the main thing we're going to do is the launching album by Mauro O'Connor from Abbey Field. It's a brilliant collection of Schlieve Luca music. Then as well, we're going to talk to a couple from uh, the States who are responsible for um, a great website called therushymountain.com. I'm also going to talk to uh, a man who made a great music, or a great album of Schlieve Luca music. Uh, he's not from the southwest of Ireland, he's from the southwest of Manchester. We'll also have some young musicians, great young musicians again this week. Or <laughs> this week. Wouldn't it be great if this was on every week? Um, uh, we're going to have great young musicians and I'll have a bit of a look at uh, what's going to happen at the Morris O'Keefe Festival um, that's going on over the Easter weekend. So let's get into it. Here's a little sample from Mara's EP. Okay. I'm going to play a set of polkas. The first is called Paddy Cronin's. I'm then going to go into a polka, which I learned from the coro box player, John Murphy. Um, it's a version of the Hermit from Clarny. And then the final polka I'll go into is actually a version of um, the reel called Now She's Purring. Um, and it's also known as Connie Fleming's. So hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
was Kyle from Tralee uh, playing after Mara there and he's actually one of Mara's students as well, a great little player. Now I want to just show you um, an album that you mightn't have, um, you mightn't have heard of. Uh, it's by a man named Michael Sheehy. Uh, it's called The Cat Rambles. I first came across it when it was given to me by John and Katie Housen um, at the Patrick O'Keefe Festival a couple of years ago. John and Katie and a couple of other people, George and Eileen, these are people who are responsible for the Julia Clifford uh, Tribute uh, Festival that went on a couple of years ago now in uh, the south of England. Um, they, uh, it's a lovely album, it's full of really great uh, Schlieve Lucre music and played in a way, a really genuine way. I like the. I was just blown away by that, uh, how the feel of it was really genuine, you know, it was really kind of genuine. Uh, and I actually said it, I met Jackie Daly that weekend and I asked him, had he heard it? And he was like, he was explaining to me how, um, he was like very complimentary about it and explaining how Michael gets the, the, the sound into it because it, it's unusual, it's supposed to be playing a piano accordion, but he used the bellows and, and his bass, the bass note stuff is just brilliant. Anyway, I wanted to talk to Michael first about his, uh, about how the album came about and then just a bit about his dad as well and he'll play a few tunes. Did that, is that recording at your side, do you think? Or? Uh, it looks promising, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think so, yeah. I've always just played music because I um, enjoyed playing it. I learned from my father and uh, I played with friends and I just enjoyed playing at home. So I'd never had any intention of actually recording a CD. Uh, but then I came to live in Suffolk and I met uh, John and Katie Housen. Uh, John and Katie have a great interest in Schlieve Lucre music. And um, it was a very lucky coincidence. So we got together and we started playing tunes together. And John um, runs Veteran Records, who's quite a well-known English um, folk music label. And they've done quite a few Irish uh, artists as well, including Liam Farrell and uh, Rushy White. Um, so as we play together quite a lot and started sharing tunes and all that kind of thing, John eventually came up with the idea that maybe I should have a go at doing some recording. So um, we... The focus, I think, was mainly about the tunes I learned from my father, uh, the way um, he played. Basically, I still play like my dad played, pretty much, uh, and it hasn't changed a great deal. So I think there's an old-fashioned quality about the way I play, um, and um, I think that's 
something that they uh, hoped to capture. So uh, that's, that's what we aimed for, really. Some, some of the old tunes from Shri Lukra, West Limerick, that I always used to play with my dad. Um, well, my, uh, my dad's from West Limerick. He, uh, he was born in Balaniska, Fiohana. Um, and my mum was, uh, lived nearby in Kilmeady in West Limerick. Uh, my dad learned to play music as a lad. He was born in 1925, so he was le learning his music in the 1930s and early 40s. Uh, he started playing around all the local dance halls for the, um, for the dancers. Um, that's how we met my mum in Kilmeady uh, Village Hall. Uh, she was a great dancer, so um, eventually in the uh, early 50s, my mum came over to England to work as a nanny. He mainly worked on the building sites and my mum ended up working as a dinner lady. And we grew up in the long site part of Manchester, which is South Manchester. And mainly we played at home, really. Um, I used to, my dad's music filled the house, basically. Uh, he played with a great vigour and energy. I'm sure he played as if he still was in the that dance hall in Kilmeady, you know, when he was sat in the front room in the, in our terraced house in Manchester. So his music filled the house really, and it was a, it was a lovely thing. Impact of this series, we brought um, Anya and Francis O'Connor here 
to uh, for to play a couple of tunes after their album. They didn't come home till morning. Uh, when they came, they brought their three, three children with them, and um, with Elin on the last one. And now we're going to have uh, I'm going to introduce you to Nisha in this one. He's a great um, accordion player. I think he's going to play two jigs uh, that he got from Brian O'Leary. So now I'm going to talk to a couple from the USA, Patrick Cravena and Crystal Bailey. And um, first about their love, how they uh, discovered Shalev Luker music, but um, then about a website called therushymountain.com. Uh, I suppose in recent years, uh, Shalev Luker music is getting a bit of a muscle on the internet. We were, you know, we were talking about uh, the brilliant resource that uh, uh, Fiddle Day Scarta Glen that IE is you now. Uh, but a long time ago, um, there wasn't uh, there wasn't really much about Shiv Luker music apart from one website, therushymountain.com, and uh, 
that was the work of Patrick. Uh, it's, gosh, oh, it's, it's brilliant. There's a brilliant map on it about, uh, the, about the area. There's about all, nearly all the, that about the older musicians on it. Um, there's a great page with like all the commercial recordings. You know, if you're getting into um, the music from the area, there's a great list of ones there and you could kind of go through, see which ones you're missing. Um, Oh, and there's a brilliant thing that started uh, there recently uh, where he, he does the, like, the top 40, he's done the do top 40 polkas and the top 40 slides and on like that. And again, like, if you're getting into the, the tunes, uh, it's just a great way to see a list of tunes, you know, that you can go and learn or, you know, or do, you know, do you agree, is this the top 40 <laughs> or the, your top 40 or whatever. But um, so first I just chat to him about finding uh, Shleve Luca music, and then uh, we talk about the the website. Definitely when I started playing, people told me, uh, you know, the whole regional styles thing is a myth or um, doesn't exist anymore, has died out. People said it's just, it, that just isn't how Irish music is anymore. They, it's just, you know, you just learn a tune that you think is interesting from a recording and, you know, just throw them all together uh, or whatever the repertoire happens to be at your local session, you know, that's what you play. So it was a really long time before I even uh, figured out that uh, regional styles are absolutely, definitely a thing, <laughs> and um, and they're uh, really a wonderful way of uh, experiencing the music. Um, I, I will distinctly remember the first time, it was actually my dear friend, Laura Federson, who's a great fiddler, um, the first time she played a polka, like with the pulse. and. It, it was so beautiful. It was just like, oh, what is that? That's amazing. Like, oh my God, I didn't realize that's how they're supposed to sound. And then later when I came here, you know, Tess Slominski was living here. And so she gave me some fiddle lessons and she was kind of um, a, a big touchstone for us on like how Schlieveluke music could sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, from that moment on, my, my heart just caught fire. I was like, oh my God, this is, this is the music I want to play. This is just the best and then as we as I've gotten deeper into it um, and really learn to listen closely to these old recordings of these players and just the the absolute brilliance um, it's almost fractal like you dig down and there's more and you dig down there's even more and I think a lot of people don't appreciate that about it but I feel lucky to have discovered it <laughs> yeah definitely the the more we learn the more interesting it gets you know it just kind of sucks you in So the history of the website uh, is a little convoluted. So in addition to our trips to Castle Island, one of the, the our experiences of the Schlieflucre community uh, is going to the festival up in the Catskills, uh, which you probably heard of. Um, it's it's definitely not a Schlieflucre uh, festival, <laughs> but um, it pulls people from all over and there's, and you find your people when you go there, you know what I mean? So. We kind of discovered that shared love up there with those people. Like we, we, you know, we met them. We realized that we liked them. Played some good music. We we realized we we're gravitating towards the same tunes and the same style, and you know, really bonded over that. And then we have to figure out a way to keep this going when we're not together. So the first thing we did was we started a. Uh, like a messenger group chat <laughs> so that we could just kind of keep in touch and like you know you know if we find an interesting recording of somebody you know we can send it to our our, our friends and you know learn the same tunes like and here's some massive unapologetic geeking out yeah, just like total let's, nerd, let's just nerd go time. all in nerd time yeah it occurred to me well why don't we make a facebook page so that other people, we can discover other people and other people can discover it, you know what I mean? Just kind of broaden the community because we knew there are tons of people out there interested in Schlieffluker music, but 
we didn't know all of them. And, uh, you know, and we're, it, it's like, for us, it's a continual process of discovery. And the more people we can kind of connect with, the more we can discover. You post something on Facebook and it disappears after a week, basically. You know, it's unlikely that somebody will see it again. You can't, like, go looking for stuff. So I wanted something where if somebody was interested in finding out about Julia Clifford, they could go there and find it very easily rather than have to sift through uh, you know, a bunch of posts. What I'd hoped for it is for, you know, if somebody wanted to learn more about it, they would know where to go. These electronic media have other functions as well. I mean, we're also kind of proselytizing. You know, we have a lot of friends who are great musicians here in the States, for example, um, who are interested in learning more about Schlick Luke music. And so it is a resource to kind of like, hey, if you really want to learn some great tunes, go here. Or if you want to learn about these people, go here. Okay.
That was Maeve Nee Connell now. Uh, Maeve is a brilliant musician, brilliant fiddler. She's a regular uh, contribu a contributor to um, uh, the Hand of Down of the Glen, the World Fiddle Day um, uh, concerts, and uh, also is a, a former winner of the um, Morris O'Keefe Perpetual uh, Trophy for fiddle, uh, for fiddle playing. Um, uh, that brings me as well to uh, just to, to have a talk about the Morris O'Keefe Festival. The Morris O'Keefe Festival 2021 is going online. It'll take place over the 3rd and 4th of April from morrisokeefe.org. Watch the website for uh, the exact times of the concerts and um, any extra events that might be added as well. The contributors to the concerts are probably too many to name here, but you can expect high quality music from Schlieve Lucre and beyond. Some previous winners of the Perpetual Trophy, uh, as well as some nostalgia with uh, some nice footage from uh, uh, past festivals. Because it's the 20th anniversary, the festival and Schlieve Lucre Records are uh, bringing out a special limited edition CD as well of Morris's playing. So, and that will be launched at the festival as well. So it's the 3rd and 4th of April. Watch MarsO'Keefe.org for all the times and events. So let's launch Mara's uh, album. So, you know, uh, um, one of the, the, the big things that really impressed me about Mara was when the first time I heard her, um, PJ and had a post up about um, uh, a girl from Abbey Field who was after winning uh, the All Ireland Concertina. I remember putting it on, and um, you know there was a bit of chat going on and all this. And then she went to play a tune, and I really expected her to play like one of these really complicated reels, you know, one of the big six or something like that was full of like um, technical stuff. But she didn't. She played. a uh, a lovely set of slides, like you know, the exact, uh, the exact kind of music you'd hear if you walked into uh, like a session in Abbey Field. And when I was just like, <laughs> "That's it, <laughs> that's that's the stuff." Like, you know, uh, I just I think she really gets the the idea, you know, like this. I suppose the idea of place uh, within one's music and. Um, that's a really great thing, you know. And uh, Kevin, Kevin Murphy playing on the uh, bazooki, it's brilliant. And it's really great that Kevin is playing on it because I know he's like part of a, a gang that has really promoted uh, local music over in, uh, over in Abbey Field and all over the area, you know. And, um, and great uh, Thomas Barris as well, who's no slow cheater because I remember uh, seeing uh, his band rising. Uh, receiving the, the Dan O'Connell Award uh, a couple of years ago. Um, so I, I'm just really delighted to be part of uh, bringing this to you and uh, whatever <laughs> you're listening on, please turn it up as loud as you can and feel the flame. I am going to play a set of jigs. The first one I learned from the playing of Dennis Murphy and um, Charlie Mulvihill uh, from a session recorded in the Bronx and it's called The Rakes of Kildare. And then I'm going to go into another jig. Um, it's Tom Billy's The Frost Is All Gone. Uh, this tune can be found in Dan Hurley's uh, Schlieve Lucra Fiddle Masters Volume 1 and I first heard it from the playing of Paddy O'Connor. <laughs>
I'm going to go into three slides next. The first two I have always known as Willie Larkins 1 and 2. Um, Willie is um, a box player from Timpleglanton in County Limerick and would have taught me growing up in primary school all of my music. Um, they're also known as the Glanton Frolics 1 and 2. And then the final slide is Knock Clark slide. So hope you enjoy. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I'm going to continue so with a set of flings and um, the first one is called The Honeymooners and was actually composed by a great friend of mine PJ Tehan. PJ wrote this tune for two Americans uh, Crystal Bailey and Patrick Kavanagh who were on their honeymoon here in Ireland and PJ met them for a few tunes and they got on so well that he said that they had to be a tune written for them. Um, so that one's called The Honeymooners and then I'm going to go into The Road to Glaunton which was actually written by Terry Cousin Tehan. Um, PJ's grandfather would have been a first cousin of Cuz, so I just thought the connection between the two tunes is really nice, so that's why I decided to play them together. So hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, I'm going to play a set of reels. The first one is called The Crosses of Anna, which I originally learned from a recording of Dennis McMahon and Connie O'Connell. The second tune then um, can be found in O'Neill's book and it's called Take Your Choice. And then the final reel is called The Girls of Farn Four. For the next set, I'm going to be joined by Thomas Barrett and we are going to play a waltz called The Black Banks. Um, myself and Tom actually wrote this tune together over the course of the lockdowns and I suppose when the restrictions eased a bit over the summer, um, we spent a lot of time driving and exploring around the local area. So we have some fond memories of driving over and back the, the Black Banks towards Brosna. Um, so that's why we called it that. And then we are going to go into West Limerick Polka. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
Right, um, we're going to finish up now with a set of slides. The first one is called the Dirty Trettles. We're then going to go into Dolly's Delight. And the final one is Julia Clifford's Merrily Kiss the Quaker's Wife. Okay, before I finish up, I just want to say thanks to Kevin Murphy for accompanying me and of course thanks to Owen Stan O'Sullivan for inviting me to record this EP. It's been a totally new experience for me and I've really enjoyed it and he's been very patient with me um, with all the different recordings, so thanks to Stan. Um, and then I just want to thank PJ Tehan and Brian O'Leary and to Nikki and Anne McAuliffe who helped me to source an awful lot of the names, so thanks a mil. Um, so yeah, I'm going to finish up with a set of slides and thanks very much. So that's it, and thanks, for, thanks very much for staying to the end. Um, uh, if you, you should buy, go and buy that CD now. Uh, um, like Brian's one, it's a limited uh, uh, release, you know, I mean, it'll, uh, they, there's only so many, as far as the physical copies, there'll only be a limited amount. So if you wanted to get some for Christmas and all that, you know, go and buy it now. And uh, and like where where would you get it? Like there's two two records out so far. Hopefully, get another couple before the end of the year. This is um, 
you know, where would you get it, you know? So, um, uh, next I'd like to thank, or before I go, I should thank um, the McAuliffe clan for the, for the use of the hall. Um, it's a wonderful place. I'd like to thank as well the Cork, Kerry, Limerick County Councils, uh, which uh, uh, they were supported by the Arts Council and also Creative Ireland. Um, the, what is, no, I think that's it. Um, so, uh, I suppose to dedicate the, sh the whole show or the effort in the show, I'd like to dedicate it to anyone who's out there who's, um, who's looking forward to playing some music or in the future together, you know. Uh, hopefully we don't have that long more to wait and um, it'll, you know, just kind of hang on, keep playing. <laughs> play, play some more at home or play, you know, put, rewind the, uh, it'd be nice one to rewind the show and join in with uh, the lads there. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks very much and we, we'll see you, so, see you soon.